What's up guys? In today's video, I wanna show you five things that will instantly up your video game. As beginners, these things can often be overlooked, but once you know them, it's gonna be so obvious to you. I'm gonna share these with you and save you guys all of the headaches that I had to go through. So let's get into the first tip. For tip one, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about something that can just help improve your framing. If you're ever shooting a shot and you feel like it might be a little bit boring, this simple trick is gonna help you to make that shot a little bit more interesting almost every single time. So check this out. What we're gonna be doing is if we're ever looking at something and it's looking a little bit boring, what you wanna to try to do is just fill the frame with more of what you like in that particular frame. So oftentimes we can be filming a shot that's quite a big wide shot and Hannah's gonna be off there in the distance. And what we can do to make that a little bit more interesting is just to move in closer and really fill that frame with our subject, which is gonna be Hannah. This doesn't apply every time and there are situations where you might wanna be filming a big wide frame for an establishing shot or something like that, for example. But for the most part, by filling that frame more with the subject and more with the thing that you like in that frame, it's gonna make for a much more interesting shot. So let me demo this a little bit over here for you guys. The first shot that we're gonna be getting is this big wide shot of Hannah. And this is looking really nice and it's actually a completely fine shot. You could definitely shoot a shot like this and I'd be happy with it. And we got some nice golden light coming in from behind her. This is pretty cool, but if we wanted to make this shot a little bit more interesting and we thought this wasn't necessarily the best shot, what we could do is come in way closer to something like this. And you can see now by just filling that frame with Hannah being our subject, it makes it a lot more interesting. A lot of the time, if you guys have a really big wide establishing shot, the viewer or the person looking at the footage isn't really sure where they should be looking. And by just bringing everything in a lot closer and really filling that frame up with what you think is important in that frame, makes it easier for the viewer to know where they're supposed to look and what to digest in that particular shot. So this ends up working really well and it's an easy way to like just improve that shot. The next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is music and using the right music for your videos. Music is such an important part when it comes to making videos and having good music can make average footage look much better and even worse, bad music can make really nice footage look average. So it's super important that you guys manage to pick the right music for that particular video and it's important that you guys have high quality music for your videos. Picking the different vibes of music are vital to tell the story that you're trying to convey in that particular video. For example, if you take this simple shot of Hannah walking here in this forest, if we were to throw some really cheesy music on it, for example, it's not gonna look right. It's gonna look a bit silly and like maybe we're joking about, it's gonna have a completely different vibe likewise if we were to throw a super intense hardcore track behind it it just wouldn't fit it either and there would be some sort of disconnect between the video footage and the track that's playing behind uh. yeah it completely changes how your footage is perceived by the viewer and it's really important that you guys figure out the right vibe for that particular scene that you're trying to find a track for. As well as making sure that you guys have the right vibe of music, it's also really important that you guys have high quality music for your video. Which is why I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, which is Licked. Have you guys ever thought about being able to use music from some of your favorite artists and being able to put those tracks in your videos, still being able to monetize them without having to worry about anything like copyright strikes? Yeah, that would be completely insane, right? Well, that is exactly what Licked Music does. Licked is a service that allows creators like you and I to use commercial music in our videos without worrying about copyright strikes or anything like that. Licked has some major record labels already on board and they're continuously adding new tracks to their massive library of already over 50,000 tracks so far. You don't have to sign up for a monthly membership or anything like that. 
you pay per track that you want to use and the price depends on how many views you get on your YouTube videos. So if you have a really small channel, you're gonna end up getting a much smaller price. And if you have a larger channel, you'll end up paying a little bit more for each one of those tracks. Licked Music is a super awesome platform and the first of its kind. It's the only platform that is bringing like proper commercial tracks to creators like you and I. If you guys wanna check it out, there is a link in the description and you get your first track completely free to use and you will also get 50% off your second order. So check it out, link's gonna be down there in the description. Let's get on to tip three. The next thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is something that's gonna kind of change the way you guys might think about camera movement the next time you're filming something from the side. Let me use Hannah as a little example here and I'm gonna show you a bit of a movement here and show you the difference between these two movements and how much better the one looks. For me personally, I don't really ever like to pan my shots like this and have a turning shot like that. Maybe sometimes they work if you have your camera on a tripod or something like that. But personally, I think most of the time they end up looking a little bit weird. And what we're gonna talk about for this tip is something that you can do just to change that and make your shot look so much better with very little change. So let's get one shot first using this panning movement and getting Hannah walking past here. And I'll show you guys what I mean. The shot is gonna look fine and it's not bad necessarily, but it just doesn't look quite as cool as it could and it kind of looks weird. So, okay, so check this out. If you want to walk past here, Hannah, okay, go. Okay, you can see if I just do a panning shot. That looks fine. It's not like bad and that's kind of cool. But personally, I think there is something that you can do that is gonna make it look so much better. And what that is, is actually not to turn the camera like this, and it's rather to track or slide with Hannah as she's moving like that. So let's try to get a shot like that, and I'm gonna show you guys how much better that looks. Okay, if you wanna walk again, and what we're gonna do now is try and keep Hannah in the same part of our frame, instead of following her like that, we're gonna keep her on the back third, and we're gonna walk with her keeping the camera just next to her like this. Okay, let's go. I definitely think that that looks way better. And if you guys look back at that first panning shot, it really doesn't look that nice and it definitely doesn't look as professional as something like that sliding shot that we just did. Now, you guys might be asking yourself, well, Sean, I don't have a super sweet gimbal or anything. How am I supposed to get those amazing sliding shots when I'm just shooting handheld? And as you guys saw, I just shot that handheld and it still turned out looking pretty smooth. So our next tip and tip four is actually gonna be how to get smoother handheld shots. So shooting handheld footage can no doubt be kind of tricky and it's something you guys need to practice and master a little bit. But let's talk about a couple of things that can definitely improve the likelihood of getting a really nice smooth shot even if you guys are shooting handheld. I think the first thing that you guys need to look at is holding your camera properly and making sure that you have two hands on it. If you're just shooting like this or shooting like this or something, you're gonna get a lot more shake. By gripping your camera really nicely and firmly, holding it with two hands, it's already gonna take away a lot of the micro jitter. The second thing that is gonna be a huge help is adding weight to your camera. If you have a little Marillus or a DLSLR camera, they are pretty light and they end up being quite shaky and they move around quite a lot. But by adding weight, even if it's something like one of these bendy Gorilla Pods, if you put this on the bottom, all of a sudden you have more weight to that camera and it's gonna be less shaky and it's gonna take away a lot of that micro jitter. If you guys don't have something like this, maybe you even have a normal traditional style tripod, that will work too fold it up and have it the legs in their short mode and have it on the bottom, it's gonna be even heavier and probably work better than one of these. And that's definitely one of the things that are gonna help most when shooting that handheld footage. Something else that you guys might wanna do is add a third point of contact. So when we're shooting and we're holding this, we have our two hands on it, but it still allows quite a lot of freedom. If you guys add a third point of contact onto this camera, it takes away a lot of the movement. And what I mean by a third point of contact is you could even hold this up against your chest and now making it almost part of your body. Your body generally isn't gonna be like shaking and micro jittering. So by holding it on there, it's gonna be really nice and firm.
sperm. You could also hold it up to your eye, making your eye the third point of contact. Another one of my favorites is actually if you guys have a strap for your camera, put that strap around your neck and pull the strap tight. That's gonna make it that you're pulling against yourself and the camera almost locks out and it still gives you a lot of freedom to move the camera around because of that neck strap. And that's probably my favorite way to shoot handheld footage. One thing to note, if you guys do wanna walk while shooting your handheld footage like we were over there, I almost find it works better if you actually, instead of having your camera close and tucked in towards you like this, you actually move it out a little bit and free up those arms because now they almost act like shock absorbers and any steps you're taking, that jolt isn't gonna be transferred into your camera if you were doing something like holding it on your chest or having that more contact or having your arms tucked in like this. So by straightening out your arms, letting your, these shock absorbers take a lot of that impact as you walk and then obviously just trying to walk as smooth as you can and really bending those knees and like mastering that ninja walk that you see people doing that's gonna help and you can see that in the shot that we got it actually turned out being pretty smooth and as a last resort you guys can also throw on warp stabilizer once you're in your editing software and that should take out the last little bit of shake that's left for tip five I want to talk to you about a really interesting lighting technique that I know a lot of amateur and novice filmmakers wouldn't have thought of before and to be honest it took me quite a long time into my filmmaking career to figure out how to really like wax this one and dial it in and basically this is what I'm talking about as most people when you think about taking photos a lot of people assume that you need the light source being the sun or whatever, or whatever it is to be coming from behind the photographer and shining onto the subject whatever that might be if it's a person for example you're gonna light up their face with that Sun or anything and it's gonna shine right onto their face lighting them up nicely like that of course that's what a lot of people think and it often is the case often you can use this as a lighting setup but I want to give you guys another option for lighting and one that I've been loving using lately in my photo photos and videos and this is basically what it is if you all of a sudden shift your light source to almost behind your subject it's known as three-quarter backlighting and it creates a really interesting depth on your subject's face or on that subject so if you put your subject just slightly off to the side of the light and you let the light hit the side of them that is facing away from camera and you put your camera capturing the shadowed side of your subject it creates this really nice depth in that shot and creates a very interesting look this works a lot better when the sun is lower in the sky and you're going to struggle to do this type of thing when it's any higher so if you check out this first shot here we have Hannah facing straight into the sun and you can see it creates a flat light on her face lighting up her whole face evenly almost like a beauty light or a beauty setup this is what like a beauty vlogger for example would do if they were shooting something in their bedroom or something but if you look at this second shot here when we switch Hannah and have the sun actually coming in from almost behind her you get this really interesting look where the side of her that's facing towards the camera is the shadowed side and it creates this hair light golden light around the edge of her it makes this really interesting beautiful shot with a lot more depth to it so this is something that you guys need to play around with and experiment with you can get some really interesting shots this way but most importantly know that you don't always have to have your light source coming from behind camera shining onto your subject you can move it around and play with all sorts of different lighting techniques okay guys that's gonna be it for this one I hope that you found some of these tips useful and I hope you can put them to use next time you guys are out shooting remember to go check out the link in the description to Licked. you can go and get your first track completely free and 50% off of your second order it's an amazing service that they're providing and the first of its kind allowing you guys to use some of your favorite artists in your videos and it's something that I definitely recommend you guys going to check it out so links gonna be down there in the description if you enjoyed this video hit like if you want to see more hit subscribe hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you guys in next week's video peace